found myself in a little situation where I wasn't improving at the game. I was actually kind of getting worse. And as each day went on, I tried changing my classes. I tried playing differently. I tried literally doing everything and I was just not getting better. And then I realized one thing, I haven't changed my settings in a long time. And if you guys are like me, you got to change some certain things in your settings in order to refresh your head kind of at this game. I play a lot better and stuff like that. So today we're going to be talking about the settings and what I changed to make myself get out of this slump, get out of this, like just going not too good, just playing pretty average at that. And we did fix it. I did change and I did get a lot better just by changing these few things. So what is up guys? My name is Nick and welcome back to another Warzone video. Like I said, today we're talking all about settings, what you really need to change if you find yourself in a situation where you're just not improving at the game because every day you should be better than the last day that's how it should be i mean obviously it's not on a day-to-day -day basis but you should be better than you were two months ago if you look at it that way now guys, quickly, I just wanted to interrupt the video here. I'm actually editing it right now, but I wanted to ask you guys to leave a comment down below, letting me know what your sensitivity is right now in the game. What you guys are playing on, what you guys are comfortable at. Let me know down in the comments. I'm always interested in seeing this, and I always ask this question on settings videos because I want to see what the average sensitivity is. But anyways, yeah, let's get right back into it. So let's talk about it, and there's a lot of things that I actually went and switched and did notice that I do play a lot better. Now, the first thing is the BR button layout, the Battle Royale button layout. I left this the same, and that's because I don't like drop shotting. I feel like if I drop shot, let's say somebody is shooting at you in your like torso area where your belly button is, once you start drop shotting and you go through the animation, they're going to get a few headshots on you. They're going to hit a shot into your head, dealing a lot more damage than they should. So I don't like drop shotting for that reason. I like jump shotting instead, and the reason I I like this is because if somebody is shooting you in that torso area and you decide to jump while you're in the middle of the gunfight they're gonna hit your legs dealing a lot less damage so that's why I go for that instead drop shotting is cool if you're really good at it you could really use it to your advantage but I don't like it you are harder to hit when you drop shot those so I will say that so I play on stick and move and I put it on flipped that's what I really like to have on my button layout and I think it's always gonna stay at that now the stick layout preset I never touch this I just leave this on default I don't want to like start looking left when I'm looking right and it's just it's just weird don't even touch that unless i don't know i don't know anyone that actually plays on that now another thing i didn't change was the invert vertical look there's no point in that so one thing i did change is actually the horizontal and the vertical stick sensitivity so i was playing on a 9 9 or a 10 10 i don't remember it was somewhere around there and i decided to bring it a lot lower and i brought it to a 6 6 for both now sometimes i put the vertical one higher than the horizontal but i decided to just go for 6 6 on this one here and i did notice one thing i was actually a lot better on snapping onto targets and this really did help me out a lot this helped me get so many more kills and yeah sure when it's high you could easily turn on people and stuff but when you're in gunfights in warzone there's not much turning around that you have to do like unless it's really up close and there's a full team on you you don't have to worry about that too much so dropping this to a 6-6 was a lot easier for me now there is another thing i changed as well and that's the ads sensitivity multiplier for the high zoom and the low zoom now the ads sensitivity is only affected when you're aiming down sights. If you're not aiming down sights, the sensitivity is useless. It does nothing. So what I did for the low zoom was I set it to 0.95 and the high zoom at 0.85. So this is for any gun that has less than a 3.25 optic. And this is really nice because this is for the guns where you're using the iron sight, where you're using maybe like the, a reflex sight, a, a no zoom reflex or something like that. It does a good job you'll stay on target and you won't actually get off the target much. If you put it up to like 120, for example, you're going to be missing a lot of shots unless you're like beast mode or something and you could stay accurate, you'll be missing a lot. So keep it at 0.95. And this one here is mostly for snipers or if I'm using big scopes and stuff like that, those tend to have a lot more recoil added to them. And with this right here, I don't really want to deal with that. Like if you're using a four time scope, lower this for sure. And you will notice a huge drastic difference. So make sure you guys go ahead and do that. Now, another thing I want to talk about and this is super important and you guys got to disable this as well that is controller vibration now you could play with it on it's good feedback whatever you know when you're shooting a gun but like turn it off trust me because when this is on your fingers are vibrating everything's vibrating so you're doing micro movements with your thumb and you could be missing some shots due to that now it's not for sure that you will but I just disabled it I disabled it all the way in black ops 2 I, I saw playing with this I believe and it just feels so much better now I will say when you do actually disable this you're gonna notice it's gonna feel very 
very, very weird for maybe one or two days. But once you get used to it, you'll never, ever play with vibration again. Trust me on that. Now, aim assist, I leave it at standard. I had it at precision for a while, and then I changed it to focusing for a while as well. And I'm talking about like a month on each at least. And I just feel like standard is just so much better, at least for my play style. It just feels a lot easier. The aim assist works a lot nicer. And uh, precision is all right, but it only kicks in when you're really, really close. If you're not aiming directly at the target who's like 200 meters away or 150 meters away, it's not going to stick that nice. So stick to standard and it'll do a good job. Now, everything else pretty much is the same. So like this right here, the weapon mount activation, weapon mount movement exit, I leave that the same. All this is the same. But one thing you got to change is the use reload behavior. Make sure it's on con contextual tap. This allows you to pick us up as fast as possible. You don't want to have something where you have to hold square in order to pick something up. It's just, it's useless. Now, if you are standing over a bunch of items, make sure to hold square if you have to reload your gun because if you don't you're just going to pick up stuff off the ground and it gets quite annoying now i actually want to get into the other settings as well the general and the audio but i just want to show you guys right here again that everything is pretty much untouched here i i, I don't really touch these bottom ones besides contextual tap let's get into the general settings here so the brightness again i didn't change this one i feel like 65 at least on my monitor on my console this is the nicest one you want to make sure that the picture on the left is actually not visible a lot of people play with this set all the way up to 100 and your game looks washed out it looks horrible it looks like it's just disgusting so don't play with that way too high there's no point in it you want to make sure that it actually says not visible now the barely visible you don't want to make it where it's barely visible you want to be able to see it clearly but at least make the gray look like a darker gray in the background on top of the or behind the mw logo it's just whatever you make sure you change that film grain zero obviously don't ever play with film grain on it looking at long distances enemies are going to be harder to spot so don't do that and then uh, world motion blur as well disable that and weapon motion blur disable that man if you have weapon motion blur on and you're shooting at someone and he's running in very very fast when you try to track him with your gun it's gonna blur it's gonna look ugly and you're not gonna be hitting every single shot you should and if you have world motion blur if you're trying to look at for someone and you're moving left to right looking for him he's just gonna blur in with the background so don't use that as well it just it, it looks awful like it, don't do it other things, obviously, on-demand texture streaming, I have that enabled. I think this might only be an option on PlayStation 5 and maybe the new Xbox and PC. I don't know about previous gen, but I have it set to that. And then the minimap, obviously, square. That looks the best. Minimap rotation, you want it to rotate with you. You don't want to be, like, running forward and then your map is pointed downwards. You don't, don't do that either. That's just weird, and it gets confusing. Compass, um, numbers or letters, obviously, put on letters so you can tell your teammates if somebody is north, if they're west, if they're south, or east or whatever it's all cool so yeah everything else is pretty much the same down there and the most important settings in my opinion is the audio settings if you have a good headset this is the settings you want to make sure you throw on to you don't have to copy mine directly but i'm gonna give you reasoning as to why i have everything set to where it is so the audio mix boosts low i feel like this is the best for hearing footsteps at little further distances now in this game it seems like you can't hear anything over 10 meters away so just put this on you'll be able to hear that 10 meters at least and it, it should be all right for you but it's really hard to hear footsteps in this game master volume i have set all the way to 100 i want to hear everything that i want to hear very very loud and what i mean by everything i want to hear i don't care for music that's set to zero i don't want to listen to music especially at the end of the game when you're in that final circle sure that music might hype you up and stuff but if there's an enemy coming up behind you and you can't hear his footsteps because that music is on it's gonna suck and you're gonna die so i turn this off completely i don't care about the vehicle music i don't care about the end game the end circle music i don't care about any of that make that off for sure dialogue volume this is where the actual um i guess your teammates characters call out stuff so if they see someone they'll be like enemy inbound i like to have it but i don't want to hear it like over everything else so i definitely set that to 80 only and it's all right there now effects volume this is pretty much everything else it's like grenades blowing up guns being shot footsteps all of that set this one to 100 you definitely want to hear this it's probably the most important one there juggernaut music i mean i don't even get jug to begin with but disable that obviously hit marker sound effects i like the modern warfare ones you could go to classic they're cool as well but i like the new ones i don't know why it's just it's just me i, I kind of like those ever since modern warfare came out i've been using those now mono audio keep this disabled if you if you enable this it's going to set the audio into your headset to come out of both ears so if there's somebody running on your left it's going to come out of your left and your right ear you're going to have no idea where he's actually coming from so make sure this is disabled if there's somebody on the left you will hear 
hear him on the left. You don't have to worry about that. Now, voice chat. This is important as well. So my open mic threshold is at 3.16. I'm not going to set it all the way to like one or something because then people could actually hear when I'm breathing and stuff. So I don't like that. If you set it higher, you have to talk in order for the mic to pick up your voice. Now, the voice chat volume, I have it to 138. This is so I could hear my actual uh, friends, my teammates a lot louder as well. Over if someone's gun, if we're in a gunfight and someone's shooting and my, one of my teammates has to call out and let me know where the enemy is, that right there, I could, I'm able to hear them even as I'm shooting or as we're driving. It's nice. Now, my microphone volume, I set it to 130 just in case they don't set theirs up here. They could at least hear me a little bit louder than everybody else coming through their headset as well. Now, the voice chat effect, put it to no effect, and that should be it. So yeah, I, I disabled the word tracks as passenger and war track volume is set to zero just in case for some odd reason I still end up hearing it so those are my settings guys I do change these every so often I try to play with the same settings for the past few months and I noticed when not changing it I just don't play as well I get used to it and then I kind of rely on my settings in a way and it just it doesn't work that way you got to change it man you keep everything fresh always change it like i said man if you guys could drop a like on this video that would be amazing subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and let me know down in the comments below what your sensitivity is set at in the game thank you guys for watching my name is nick and i'll catch you in the next one peace